All right, I'm going to walk you through the setup process for a Revo 540C milling system. Underneath your matrix, um, there's a Revo 540C uh, box that shows up. So what you need to do is you need to take your model and drop it into that little project manager or job bag. Now the process is going to know that this is a ring because we hinge that off of the actual ring rail that's in, you know, included in the ring. You don't need to worry about your stones because we actually delete those out. Now the traditional tool paths are going to be these five that you see right here. The one I'm going to concentrate on today is one that is unique to the Revo 540C, which is our base clamp type application. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. You'll notice it automatically puts a tab down here um, so that you don't need to worry about how it's going to be supported. From here, now all you need to really do is determine what um, do you want to do at the center? Would you like to place a hub in it because you need to go and do a rotary on it? Would you like to have it hollowed out? If the particular piece happens to be hollow in the top, we can actually get up inside of there and cut that out for you. Um, this one automatically sets it up to cut out the finger hole and this one here means you're just going to go ahead and let it do the rough cut on there but you can come back and um, cut that out yourself. I'm going to go ahead and choose the center hole cutout. From here, it defaults and it knows what size of wax you're going to need to be able to produce this particular piece, but of course, you can override that if you so choose. Now, because I chose a base clamp, this gives me two options um, here. I can either come in from a traditional type 4-axis milling, or we're going to come in from the top, the sides, and uh, back and forth, or I can choose our um, unique product here where I can come in actually from uh, eight different directions, which means I'm going to be able to come in not only straight up and down, right and left and back and forth, but we can articulate this up on a point so I can actually have the cutter come in from this direction on all angles. That's actually going to help give you a better overall surface finish. From here then, I can choose whatever uh, tool path distance I want. So I can go from a point oh five to a point oh two depending on the type of cut process that I want to do. Okay, Obviously, the, the larger the step overs, the rougher the surface is going to be, but there might be something like maybe down in the bottom of the shank here. If you're going to do that, you don't necessarily worry about that too much. Um, you don't need that quite as tight, or at the top, you need a little bit tighter. And I'm going to show you here in a little bit on how we can actually go in and adjust those two different areas. So. A lot of times I cut things on 0 0.03 or 0 0.04, but again, you can determine that as you go through, um, and it depends on the type of model that you're doing as well. The other thing I'd like to point out is that our software has actually turned this into what we call an STL file. In other words, it's triangulated the actual surface, um, which is what an STL file does, so that it now um, gives a little bit different look or feel to it, but it still is what's going to drive where the G-code goes. Um, for those of you that don't understand G-code, that's the mathematical equation for the path that the mill is going to take, um, not only distance that it's going to travel, but also the feed rate it's going to travel at the exact same time. So while that was calculating there, um, it's finished itself up, and now here in a little bit it's going to actually show you each of the tool paths that it's going to, going to take. Each color indicates a different part of the path and so you're going to see a, a lot of things going on here. Okay, it's now complete and if you want to flip this over and look at it or you want to roll in on it, each one of these little lines right here that you see, that's a path that this tool is going to go down. Okay, I click on the word next and this is actually has broken out the tool path. So if I want to go in and look at each component one by one, I can do so. All right, the thing I want to point out to you is remember I chose 0.04 for the tool path on the particular cut number three, which is the top. Well, if you choose that you want that a little bit tighter, you might be you want it 0.02, I can come in and readjust that and hit set, and now it's going to go in and tighten that tool path up right there at the very top. Once you get that done, you just say save style, and it's going to prompt you to save it wherever you want to save it. And now you have the tool path that's going to be imported into the Revo C software, and you can import that in by either a network cable or via a little jump drive. But that's all it takes to actually produce a tool path to operate a model that's going to be ran through the Revo 540C.